What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another Moros tutorial video. In this video, we're going to check out how you can handle Web3 authentication flows with a Python Flask backend, the Morales SDK, and more specifically, the Morales Auth API. So to best show you this, I'll have this little web app over here where we can log in. This should prompt us to connect our MetaMask account. And after we connect account one over here on the Ethereum mainnet, this will send a challenge request to our Python backend to ask the Morales API to generate a Web3 login challenge. Let's go ahead and create that. And we should receive it over here, like we do. My DAP wants you to sign in with your Ethereum account. After we press the signed, we'll send another request to our Python backend to check with our Morales Auth API that this signature is actually correct. And if it is, it'll generate a new user to log in to our web page over here. So now this account over here, 0x4d2, is generated a new profile ID 0xc64 and is logged into our web page. We can check this out on our Morales admin dashboard over here. So this user was previously logged in on the 17th of November at 1035. But now as we refresh this page, they should have just logged in as they did over here. So at 1044 today, 17th of November, they logged in using the Polygon network. And this is their unique profile ID and address. So you know, you can keep track of who's authenticated to your apps. We can even go ahead and change the users that's logged in. So we logged out, go ahead and disconnect this account over here. We disconnect and change our account to, for example, account two, which is 0x5DAD. We can change to the Polygon testnet, for example, like so. Go ahead and handle the login functionality again. We, we select to connect to account two, connect, and this sends the request challenge for a message to us, for us to sign. We sign this signature, and as after this is verified, now we have account two over here, 0x5DAD, be generated this profile ID of 0x625. If we check out our users in our Morales admin dashboard, refresh the page, we see that this account 0x5DAD with this profile ID just logged in using the Polygon Mumbai testnet. So if this sounds good to you and handling this all using Python, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to build this. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020 and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. Rightio, let's get our project started here in our IDE. I have Visual Studio Code open and the terminal open over here and we're in the Python SDK repo. So just select an empty repository for you to set up your project in. Let's first initialize a virtual environment by running Python 3-m and give it a name, VNV and VNV. So VNV stands for virtual environment and that should create this folder for you called VNV. Now to initialize our virtual environment, Let's go ahead on Mac, write source VNV slash bin slash activate. And you get this VNV in brackets over here and we can go ahead and start installing our dependencies. Let's first ensure that pip is up to date. So pip install dash dash upgrade pip. So it looks like we had a later version of pip installed to 21.24, but now we have 22.31 and now we can install our dependencies running pip install flask, then go ahead and run pip install flask underscore cores. And then finally, Morales. So pip install Morales. So this is the new Morales Python SDK. And beautiful. Now that we have all our dependencies, we can go ahead and create a file over here. Let's create a app.py and make sure it's outside of our BNV folder over here, app.py, and go ahead and start by importing all these dependencies to our main backend script over here, app.py. We can actually close down the terminal. All right, so our dependencies are Flask from the Flask package, then request. So this will allow us to get the query parameters that are sent from our client. Then we have authentication from Morales, and then Flask cores to allow cross-origin requests. Now let's initialize our app, app equals flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore and then let's ensure that we allow cores over here so wrap our app inside cores then we can go ahead and create a variable which has our morales api key so api underscore key and that will be equal to our morales api key which you can get from your morales admin dashboard so open up google chrome 
Radio. So here I'm on my Morales admin dashboard. If you haven't created an account already, you can create one at morales.io for free. Then over here in the sidebar, select Web3 APIs and get your API key from here. Just copy it. This is just for testing purposes, but you should always keep your API key safe. So jumping back into Visual Studio Code, we can paste it in here. So now when we run any of our Morales authentication API requests, we'll know which Morales account to use, and it'll actually allow us to do them. And now we can write our first route for requesting a challenge. So when a user wants to authenticate, they first have to request a challenge from Morales, Morales sends back a message, the user signs that message sends that signature to be verified again in our backend. So that'll be another route. And then after that verification is done, the user is authenticated. So starting off with our request challenge route. All right. So our first app route will be to the request challenge endpoint and it'll allow a get request so we can get the query parameters. So for example, the chain and address a user is trying to log in with. Now let's go ahead and define a request challenge function over here and start off by getting the arguments that have been sent within the request to this endpoint. So in our client side, we'll have to send the chain ID and address we're trying to log in through. And then let's create a body variable, which we have to pass to the Morales authentication API for requesting a challenge. Let me just paste in the key value pairs we'll need in here, like so. And now we can talk through these. So first of all, we'll have to define the domain that wants to log in. You can set whatever domain you have your app at. I'll just call it my app for this test case. Then for the chain ID, this is sent from the client side as they're requesting to log in. We'll get the chain ID from the arguments sent to this request challenge endpoint. The same thing for the address. So the wallet address the user is trying to log in with. Then the statement we'll send to the user is please confirm your login. And then the URI is my DAP, of course. And the expiration time, you can set this to whatever, for example, two minutes or one minute after you receive this, but I've just set it to the 1st of January in 2023. And you can also set a not before date. So if you don't want the authentication to happen before a certain time, but I've just set that to a time back in 2020, then the resources, if you want to provide any resources associated with the login, so this will be an array of strings. And I've just pasted the Morales documentation here as resources, and then the timeout period in sec. So these are all the required parameters for the body we have to send to the Morales authentication API to request the challenge. And then we can go ahead and actually get the result from our Morales request challenge endpoint. So that will be equal to auth from the Morales SDK. We're looking at the challenge method and the request challenge EVM endpoint. And we have to pass the API key we set at the top here and the body we set in the function itself over here. And then what we can do is we can pass this result to the client. So return result. So what this means is now the user has requested a challenge Morales has prepared a challenge with these parameters and sending this challenge back to the client, which the user can then sign using their wallet on the front end. And after they sign that signature, we can send that signature back here into our back end and create another route called verify challenge to verify that the signature corresponds to this challenge that we set here in our first response. So go ahead and create your next route here in your app.py. All right, so the next challenge, not challenge, the next route will be called verify challenge. And it'll be a get request again. And let's define the functionality that will that will be run after this endpoint is called. So define verify challenge. And over here, we'll do the same thing again, we'll get the arguments that are sent to this endpoint, like so from the request, we get the arguments. And then we can again, create a body variable that will send to the verify challenge endpoint on Morales side. And in here, we'll get from the client side, the message and the signature that was signed after this request challenge was sent. So over here, we paste in the message key, which will include the message that was sent to this endpoint and the same thing for the signature. So we'll have to send the message and the signature from our client side app to this back end. And then again, we can wait for Morales to verify the challenge and get the result back from that the result equals from Morales auth, we use the challenge method to verify our challenge EVM endpoint. And again, we pass the API key and body we set here in the function itself to verify that it's actually the user trying to log in. So two step process first requesting the challenge, then verifying the challenge. And if this is successful, we can return 
the result like so. Of course, you might want to add some error handling. If the verification doesn't work, you might want to return something else. But that's a little challenge for you if you want to go a step beyond. This is just a sample explanation of how the Morales authentication API works with a Python backend using Flask. And now just to make sure that we can run our Flask app, let's just tell it where to run the app. And we'll do it on port 3000 over here. So if the name is equal to main, we'll run the app on localhost 3000, like so. And that's all you have to do. Save that. That is your sample Flask app for Web3 authentication. Very simple. Only two endpoints calling the Morales request challenge and verify challenge endpoints. And I'll actually show you how this works when we do it on a front end React app calling these endpoints and how that all ties in together. So now what we can do is go ahead and scroll up, open up our terminal, and go ahead and run our app.py python 3 and then run app.py you see it's running on localhost 3000 and now these endpoints should be available so now let's open up a new visual studio code window and build a sample react app where we can call these endpoints and actually handle a web3 authentication all right so here i have this web3 auth react folder open where i've created a sample React app. It's very simple. The only thing we have, we've installed Wagmi and Ethers, which is a Web3 library to allow us to connect to a browser extension wallet. So in the index.js file over here, we've wrapped our app around the Wagmi config tag over here. And then taking a look at our source folder, we only have this app.js file over here, which is empty. And we can go ahead and build our functionality in here. So what we'll do is first import Axios and all the functionality from our Wagmi Web3 library to ensure we can handle the logic on our client side of sending challenge requests, verify requests, and actually handling the wallet on our web browser. All right, so here we'll paste in Axios, then we'll get the MetaMask connector. Wagmi has other connectors as well. MetaMask will use for simplicity's sake as it is the most prominent wallet over here. And then from Wagmi, we'll have use account to get the account that's trying to log in, use connect to be able to connect to the website, then use the sign message. So after we get the challenge from Morales, we can sign the message that Morales sent, and then use disconnect if we want to disconnect our account from the web page. And then of course, we'll have some state variables to store our uniquely created profile ID from Morales. So in our app component, let's destructure the functions we need from our hooks over here, like so. So now we just have this functionality ready to use in our app component. And of course, we have a profile ID variable over here, which will set after we verified a login using Morales. Now let's go ahead and create a asynchronous function called login, which will allow us to handle all the logic of sending the authentication request to our Python backend and connecting our wallet on the front end side. So first things first, we're going to check if we are connected already, we'll await a disconnect. So we can always connect our wallet to the web page, then go ahead and use the MetaMask connector over here to connect your wallet to the web page. And this will give you the account that's connected and the chain they're connected on. So the account will be the wallet address, and the chain will have the information about the chain. For example, Ethereum's chain ID will be one. All right. And after we have that information, we can go ahead and make our request to request the challenge from our Python backend because we have the wallet address and chain and those are the parameters that the request challenge endpoint takes. So we'll go ahead and use Axios to make a request to localhost 3000 where our Python Flask server is running to the request challenge endpoint. And as the parameters, we're going to send the account we got when connecting with MetaMask and the chain ID we got from the same operation over here. So now this will give us a data response, which will have a message within it. So what we'll do is go ahead and get that message and go ahead and use the sign message functionality from Moagmi to use our wallet to sign the message that our Morales request challenge endpoint asked us to sign like so. So we are going to wait sign message async with the message that the request challenge endpoint gave us. And this will give us a signature. And now we have the message and signature. So we can go ahead and send another request to localhost 3000. But this time the verify challenge endpoint with the message and signature to make sure that it is actually our account who's trying to log into our web app like so. 
So our verification variable will be awaiting Axios to verify our challenge from our Python backend that is running on post port 3000. And we're sending the message and signature. Now the verification will have data within it and a unique profile ID for every wallet that signed in to our Morales backend. So what we can do is go ahead and set our profile ID variable to the profile ID that is sent in the verification like so, so that we can use here as what we render on the page. Again, remember, this is just a sample, you also want to add some error handling, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So we'll just simply render over here. If we have a profile ID, we'll render the profile ID on the page, and we'll set a logout button, which will set the profile ID to null. But if we don't have a profile ID, we'll have a button that on click launches this login functionality we created over here. And that is it. That is how simple it is to do run web three authentication using Morales and Python and a simple react app. So now we can go ahead and run this locally as well. So for example, you can go ahead and, and run npm run start. So it knows that on port 3000, we have our Python back and running. So we'll run this on port 3001. And these repositories will be available in the link in the description if you want to check them out yourself. All right, so the page should look like this very simple login button. Let's just check which wallet we have currently. We're on the polygon testnet over here and on account six zero x c four. So let's go ahead and log in, this should first ask us to connect. Yeah, we'll connect account six over here, connect that connect. Now we've sent the challenge request to our backend and it's responded with the message over here and we're asked to sign this request. We go ahead and sign this and now we should get the verification on Morales side. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole profile ID over here. So this is our profile ID that just logged in just to make sure that this actually happened. We can go ahead and check out our Morales admin dashboard over here. So I have admin.morales.io open on our account. We check out the users. And just now today is the 17th of November and 1028 is when I'm recording this 0x C4, which was our account exactly 0x C4 got their unique profile ID 0x49. And they logged in on the Polygon Mumbai testnet. If we check this out, 0x49 is the unique profile ID. So now you have authentication for your web three app using your web three wallet. How cool is that we can check out if this works, we can log out, go ahead and disconnect this account. Let's go ahead and disconnect change to for example, account two over here and go ahead and go to the Matic mainnet, for example. So now zero x five da should be the one logging in and on the Matic mainnet. So if we go ahead and log in, we get a connection request, we connect account two. next connect. Now we should get a signature request from our Python backend. Yeah, my DAP wants to sign in with your Ethereum account. Let's go ahead and sign that. And now we have this unique profile ID for this wallet, which is 0x625. We can go check out our Morales admin dashboard, refresh this page. And now we see our address 0x5DAD just logged in on the Polygon mainnet one minute after the previous login that was on the Mumbai testnet. And this is the profile ID uniquely generated for this wallet address we see here as well. So that is how simple it is to create Web3 authentication on a Python backend. So you can handle all your backend logic, including Web3 authentication with Python. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you'll put this into good use. I'll catch you in the next one.